I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE Perliant DL380 Gen 9 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE Perliant DL380 Gen 9 server. If you find anything in this video useful, do us a favor. Click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video is specifically focused on memory. The uh, Perliant 380 Gen 9 has 24 DIMM slots inside, 12 per CPU, and we'll break down the memory channels when we actually install it later in the video. There are, uh, it, it runs on DDR4 memory. There are a number of different speeds that you can install, and this is where it gets a little bit crazy, so stick with me for a second here. Uh, you can install 2133, 2400, or 2666. No, you cannot install 2933, and you cannot install 3200. Even if you have the best V4 proc inside, the latest BIOS, the latest firmware, the the 3200 speed and 2933, they, they just won't clock down, they just won't work. So just know going into it, you need to make sure that uh, you're buying 2133, 2400, or 2666. And this is where it gets a little bit uh, crazy is that even if you're putting in 2666, doesn't mean it's running at 2666. So if you want to figure out in advance, hey, what will my RAM actually run at? Well, that's where you have to do a little bit of deciphering on what processor do you have inside is the biggest key. So if you have a V3, for instance, a V3 is going to clock down to 1866 and potentially even 1600. A V4 uh, will take, um, uh, can potentially clock down to 2133. And so, you know, if you have the high end V4, it'll still clock down to 2400. So, you know, there's just, there's some uh, ambiguousness here. And then on top of that, if you're filling up all of your memory channels uh, completely, every DIMM slot's filled up, well, then it clocks down a little bit more. So, uh, you know, there's, it just makes it a little bit difficult to say, hey, this is the max speed for uh, your Proliant. Um, but if, if you have any questions, just message our sales team. We can definitely help you figure it out in advance. And we have a bunch of different kits. And people, People ask me all the time, hey, you know, what kits do you recommend? And uh, really, right now, I'm a big fan of the uh, the 32 gig 2400 ECC Reg and the uh, 64 gig 2400 LR DIMMs. Um, those are two of the uh, the sweet spots right now uh, as far as price point overall. So, all right, now that brings us to uh, what size modules can I use? Well, you can use a, a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, a 64 gig, or all the way up to 128 gig, but there's a, there's a key for the 128 gig, and that brings us to what type of RAM can I use? You can use ECC registered, known as an RDIM, or load reduced, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at 1.5 terabytes using 2464 gigs, and then the speed will be a little bit ambiguous overall, but we'll say 2666. Uh, with um, LRDIMs on the flip side, you can max out at three terabytes, get double the scalability because there's that key for the 128 gigs because you can only use them with LRDIMs. And then you can put 24, 128 gigs to get to that three terabytes. And again, at uh, 2666, which is really see both these are going to clock down anyways to 2400 or to 2133, depending on your processor. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the speeds, the sizes, the types, let's show you how to actually install, install them. Let's point out the memory channel. So if you're not maxing it out, you know which DIMMs Lots to put them in, but before we do that, I'm going to grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, so uh, I will go ahead and just say HPE did not make this as easy as it is for Dell. Uh, Dell, they do it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Nice and easy. That, that makes sense, right? HPE does it. Uh, our first DIMM slot is going to be A12, which is right here. And then it's going to be B9. And then let's get that up there. Then it's going to be C1 and then D4. I mean, the number scheme here is just a little out of control. Could Can we just do like A1 or A2, A3? You know, this is just my suggestion, just throwing this out there. But uh, that being said, uh, if you notice, all the ones I started with were white. So white is the start of the memory channel. Black is the second dim slot in the channel. And blue is the third third DIMM slot in the channel. So if you look at it like that, you'll notice that there's two CPUs, 12 uh, memory or 12 slots per CPU, which means that there are four memory channels and three DIMMs per channel. And again, with white being the first, black being the second, and blue being the third. The importance of this is that you want to have a nice, even distribution of your modules across all the channels. So let's say, for instance, that you have two CPUs and you want to put in eight modules. You'd want to put them in all the white DIMM slots before you ever install any in the black or blue slots. And people again ask, well, why do you do that? And again, it's about performance. You want to maximize your performance. You don't want to overload you know, four memory channels and have all the other channels doing nothing. You want to have eight channels uh, equally uh, working hard 
uh, all together to give you the best possible performance, right? So it's just literally about having a nice even distribution uh, and managing the load. So that being said, let's, let's, let's go ahead and talk through this. You got A12 is going to be your first slot, B9, C1, D4, and you swing back over here and you have A12 again, B9 again, swing over here, C1, D4. So those would be the first eight. So now we're going to start hitting our black slots. So that's going to be E, 11, F, 8, swing over here, G, 2, H, 5. All right, so those would be the next four. Then swing back over, over here, and we're going to go to E, 11, F, 8, G, 2, H, 5. So again, it's a little bit confusing in my opinion. Um, they could have definitely made this a way better or way easier labeling system, but that would be how you would do it if you had 16. And now if you're putting in 24, fill it all up, no big deal. You're going to be putting them in all the blues anyways, right? Uh, but that is the, uh, the labeling system as a whole. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and actually uh, and sh show you how to install the first eight. All right, so uh, one of the things I like to point out is that before we install the module, there is a notch right here. This notch is not perfectly centered, and that notch is known as a key. And because that key is not perfectly centered, you just have to make sure that you line your module up properly. If you have it facing the wrong way, you could potentially damage the leads on the module, or you could potentially damage the dim slot. Neither are a situation we want to walk into, so just make sure you have it lined up properly. So we're going to start over here at A12. Actually, another thing I, I like to know, I like to uh, pop all of my tabs open in advance just makes it easier when I go to install my modules that I'm not uh, fumbling around that everything is just uh, wide open and that's uh, something I'm a big fan of. So alright we're gonna go ahead and get this lined up and uh, here's another good point that I should point out is that um, when you first put this in, it might look like it is uh, you know it's, it's fully inserted but it's not. You need to hear these two clicks those two clicks let you know that the module is fully seated and that the tabs have actually hooked to the side and pulled it down. So that's our first module. Now we're going to come over here to the next white slot. Now I'm going to push them all in here just in a second. And it does flip-flop over here, so just make sure, again, you have everything uh, lined up. Okay, so now I'm going to push these in. You're going to hear click, 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 click. So now we know they're firmly in there. So those would be our first for now. If we only had one CPU, it is worth noting now you would actually start hitting the black dim slots. But most people are probably going to have two with this, and we're going to continue on. So this is flip-flopped from this one right here. So again, A12, B9. Just such a strange numbering scheme. Okay, now we're going to come back over here to C1. And then D4. Now, um, I'm going to stop right here just in the interest of time to not waste anyone's time. But again, uh, if we were to continue forward, it would be the black dim slots that we pointed out and then the blue. And if you're filling them all up anyways, you can just load them all up in any manner that you please. Um, but this would be if, is more focused on if you're not maxing it out, uh, what slots do I use and how do I make sure I'm maximizing my memory channels to get the most out of them. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward and load them all up. All right, so I've officially just loaded them all up. So one of the things I always like to tell people at the end is check all your tabs make sure that nothing is sticking out. Sometimes I'll just be jetting out like just like I'm going to push out just like that. Like that little bit right there is enough. You might even see on camera it raises the module up just enough so that the leads don't connect. 
and it's hard to tell. It almost looks like it's in, but that's where I always talk about here in those two clicks is that uh, if that is that little bit right there will be the difference of uh, it registering and not. And some people will be like, hey, I have a bad dim, and it's really not a bad dim. They just haven't fully inserted their modules. So we tell people all the time, rotate your modules around, and you know, nine times out of ten, it fixes the problem uh, because people just don't have it fully seated. So it's one of the things I always recommend. That's a, a common user error: is just check all your tabs on both sides, make sure everything's fully seated. So, are right, you made it this far? Hey, click that like, smash that sub uh, subscribe, and if you're looking for any custom-built HPE, Dell, Supermicro. IBM, Cisco. We'd love the opportunity to earn your data center, your home lab's business. Please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We do new and we do use. And for HPE right now, you can go to our website. We have uh, Gen 9 and Gen 10 and Gen 8 for that matter that you can custom build right now. Pick whatever you want and uh, install Windows Server. Uh, pick anything you need for it and never even have to talk to a sales rep if you don't want. And if you need a sales rep, call us. We actually answered the phone. I know, we're old school. It's crazy. And um, for Gen 10 Plus and Gen 11, we offer those new. And we can also build those out to you. For just, so just email us at sales at cloudengines.com. Take care, guys.